Hello and welcome back to Mastering AWS featuring SQS. Today we are going to start some work in the SDK. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is we want to delete the console.log. Right, I just want to increase the screen size there so it's a little bit easier to read. The first thing that we need to do is we need to type in var for variable AWS. Whoops. First thing we need to do is we need to type in var for variable AWS, all caps, equals require quotations AWS dash SDK. So what this lets JavaScript in our compiler know is we are planning on using the AWS SDK module that we recently downloaded. If you recall in the last lecture, we just typed in the install AWS-SDK to get the module from the internet. And now we are letting our program know that we are going to use that module. And so next thing we want to do is we want to configure our region. And to do that, we type in AWS.config. Dot update and then we'll do region colon US East 2 we'll say and one thing that we usually do if we are working outside of an EC2 environment or a cloud nine environment is we would also have to add in our access key and our secret key but because we are already working in the cloud nine environment which is on an EC2 instance we don't have to worry about that it makes our lives a little bit easier but if you're working on a different if you're working on a different text editor or an IDE you would have to go in and configure that information so if we continue on we have just notified that we are planning on using the US East 2 region the next thing we need to do is we need to grab the SQS part of the SDK. So to do that, we type in var for variable SQS equals new AWS dot SQS. And so that again, that lets the file and the, the compiler know that we are planning on using the SQS portion of the module. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a queue. And to do that, we type in var parameters and we're just going to call it p-a-r-a-m-s equals then we're going to give it a q name and then we will say let's call it sdkq and if we click save and what we'll need to do is anytime that we want to run our new or updated code, we'll have to save it. And what I just use is I press Command S for save. And then you can click Run. And down here, you can see the, the port is listening on 15.454. Um, it is running our AWS SDK lesson.js file. The reason why nothing is happening is because I'm not actually running a command. So if I press stop, the next thing I need to do is I need to type in SQS. Again, we're letting the compiler know that we're using SQS, create queue. Then I want to let it know we want to use the params, comma, function, ERR for error, whoops, or data if it returns a positive result we'll say if error console.log so what this says if there is an error we want that to print to the screen we want to know what the error says and why there was an error otherwise if there is no error we want to see the result so again, I'm going to control save 
And if I hit run again, this should work. So we're listening on 15454. And then as you can see, we have the response metadata and then the QURL. The next thing that we need to do is we need to stop that from listening. And then again, we can verify that that worked. If we go back to the management console, we change the region to Ohio. And as you can see, SDKQ is listed. So that's good, that worked. What we could do is instead of again, jumping back and forth to the management console back and forth, we could comment all of this out and simply list the queues here in the SDK. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment all of that out. You can comment all of that out by hitting, pressing command, holding command and hitting the um, slash forward slash button and that'll command all of that out for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to type in SD, SQS dot list queues. Then function, once again, air and data. And once again, we want to know if there is an error, tell us what the error is. One thing that you will notice is again, there's a little bit of a delay between the management console and the SDK. It can appear from time to time. So I'm just gonna hit command save and then I'm going to click run again. And it lists the two queues that we have, the SDK queue and the test queue. So that worked correctly. So we'll stop that. What I wanna do is I wanna go back, I'm gonna comment this out. I'm gonna go back and try and add the SDK queue again to observe the result. So I just uncommented it that. I'm gonna click run and let's see what happens. It looks like it attempted to create it again. We'll stop that. If I click refresh here though, there will not be a second queue that's created. And the timestamp is not the same. So if we go back here, we're just going to comment all of this out for now. I'll click save. The next thing that we could do is we could, again, we can list the queues by, by prefix. And so to do that, we could go type in SQS dot list queues. P -A -R -A, P -A -R -A -M -S. Function. Oops. We will need the Q URL. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to grab the Q URL from SDK Q. Actually, that's not correct. Um, so I'm gonna, just gonna copy and paste this, copy, paste that. One thing that we do need to add is we do need the parameters. And then for the parameters, we need to type in Q U E Q name prefix. Then we need to give it a name. Let's say, let's call it S D K. We'll click save and then we'll run it. Right, so as you can see, we received the Q URL. 
which we know is correct. And again, we can verify that by going to the management console, clicking SDKQ, and then down here is the Q URL. So we know that that worked. All right, so that's it for this lecture. And the next lecture, we are going to take another step. We're gonna add some tags. Uh, we'll untag the tag that we just added. We'll send ourselves a message. We'll receive the message and so on. So thanks for watching and we will see you soon.